Hi everybody, I just want to talk to you about my Africa experience right now. So I went to Mozambique, Africa, I went to other places in Africa as well, but this was very significant. So we went into this meeting and even as someone that is so open to God's move and everything, it was really a crazy meeting in Af Africa. So people were dancing, uh, they were singing, I mean, they were just going nuts. Everybody was going crazy and we were like, um, uh, me and my team, all, all everybody was watching what, what was going on. It was really people were doing crazy stuff. Some people were like slain in the spirit on the floor. So, I mean, it was really too much for me, even for me, right? And and I was like looking at things and trying to discern what is going on. Be I want to tell you one thing. I always look at every meeting. I don't. I am okay with all of the above. But as long as God is glorified, that is my point. And when something happens, I always look at something and I say, how God is being glorified here. That is, that's, that's important to me. I believe uh, you do something without a purpose. I may do something without a purpose, but God doesn't do anything without a purpose. And the purpose is always for him to be glorified. If there's a miracle, Yes, I am all for miracles, but God has to be glorified. If it is being slain in the spirit, Jesus is going to be glorified. It's all about him. And when we turn it into a circus show, I have a little bit problem with that because I want to see God is being glorified. People's lives are being transformed. I am not looking for entertainment in the church. I am not looking for this in the church. I'm looking for God to be glorified. So that is my thing. Years ago, before I first time I was going to give my testimony, one day I asked the Lord, God, I never spoke in anywhere. So how do you want me to give this testimony? You're going to help me. And he gave me, these are like my first revelations, okay? you got to understand as a baby Christian. You know, he told me two things. And I'm imparting them to you, you know, giving them to you right now. He said, every time you speak, you got to do two things. I am going to be glorified. People are going to be edified. This is, those are my rules. You're going to, any message that I am going to speak, two things are going to happen. God is going to be glorified uh, uh, and people are going to be edified. And it is so biblical. Think about this. The first two commandments, love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So God to be glorified when you love him with everything in you. And people are going to be edified if you love your neighbor as yourself, right? It's super awesome. So from that moment on, I knew if I was invited to any place to speak, if I had to give my testimony, what's going to happen? God is going to be glorified. People are going to be edified. Those are my foundational rules in the ministry. And they never failed me. Why? Because those are God's rules. So in that meeting, I was like looking to the right, looking to the left. Okay, it's a little too much, but I'm not going to put God in a box right now. And while I'm thinking that, Lord, remove my skepticism, remove my criticism. You know, I'm not feeling comfortable with what I'm seeing. While at that very moment, God, uh, the leader of the uh, group said, I want everybody to sit down right now and I like everybody to pray for their neighbor. So turn to your neighbor. I look at the right. People turn to each other already. I turn to the left and there was this Mozambican young man next to me. And she said, please pray with your neighbor. And this man put his hand on my shoulder and I did like this, you know, in a very proper way. And then he started praying in tongues over me and everything at that moment he spoke came to me in my mother tongue, Turkish language. And he was telling me everything God was going to do in the next few years, and they are all fulfilled in my life. And they were amazing things, but it was hard to believe at the time where I was at, right? So he started speaking so much encouragement, and he didn't know what he said, but I knew what he said. Then I prayed over him as well, but I left the meeting very edified and very touched and very empowered. While I was leaving the meeting, and it is a crazy thing right now for the people that even in the control room to hear, as I am telling this story, this lady came up to me and she said, can I tell you something? And when I look at the lady, I could tell you that this woman's all life was prayer and all life was Jesus. You, you, I could just see no world in her. 
nothing, nothing about this world, but every, I saw this pureness and holiness in this woman. And she said to me, when did you get uh, receive Christ? Can I ask you? And I said, well, she said, did you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior in 1999 or 2000? She directly is talking. I said, I received Jesus uh, to in year 2000. She's like, wonderful, because I just want you to know, I have been praying for you for five years before your salvation. God gave me your face to pray for you, for your salvation. And I've been praying every single day for five years for you before two th year 2000. And then she said, also, I have been praying for you. Recently, God brought you to my prayer closet again because God, God, because God is going to do this, 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 and that in your life. And everything she said was everything that man prayed in tongues that came to me in Turkish language and confirm it. The crazy part about that, I remember this incident recently and I wrote it down to speak to you today. And right before I spoke to you right now, I received a text message from a friend from South Africa telling me that th maybe you don't remember that lady in Mozambique when we were there. And she said this, 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 exactly the things that I share with you. And she wants to get in touch with you because she has another word for you. <laughs> How crazy is that right before this broadcast, I received a text message and after how many years? So I want to speak into your life right now. G nothing that is happening to you in your life is an accident, but a divine appointment. And the more you look and the more you seek God and you, the more you want to hear from God instead of limiting him, you are going to receive so many messages from him that is going to encourage you, empower you, activate you and take you to the next level. And I want to speak right now that Holy Spirit will remind you of those words that he reminded me in your life that were spoken to you for them to come into fulfillment in Jesus' name. Amen.